What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, Mandalorian Season 3, Episode Number 5. And holy shit, what an episode that was. I mean, getting the flashback of Grogu being saved... That was like, awesome. The, the more we see from Order 66... Just, it never gets easy to watch those moments because you know everything, how it plays out and the result of everything is just so difficult. But finally figuring out how Grogu made it out of there, seeing Ahmad Best was just so cool, so amazing. Everything that he's been through, him getting that redemption and getting that opportunity to be a badass Jedi and saving Grogu and getting him out of there into safety. Yeah. So awesome. I'm so happy. And there was a really fun, I don't remember where I saw the video, but there was like a theory out there that Jar Jar was going to be the one to save Grogu. And it's like, how, wait, what? And Jar Jar basically saved Grogu, which is just so amazing. I'm so happy for him. I hope we get more with that character and learn more about that. Because dude was badass. He looked awesome. And, you know, I saw a discussion about, like, oh, there's so many Jedi survived Order 66. It's like, yeah, I don't know if that bothers me too much because we don't know where they went and how things progressed and how they survived long term. But seeing that play out again from another point of view was really cool. And seeing the Naboo ship show up and just the way it all played out. I was kind of hoping for a little more. I'm not going to lie, but I still thought it was a really dope moment. And finally seeing Grogu get out of there and who's responsible. We need more of that. Because I was going to say maybe they gave more flashbacks. Maybe. Because, maybe? I mean, in the ship, he was basically saying, like, oh, I'm going to take you to some friends. Like, ooh, which friends are we talking about here? Like, what other Jedi are we going to go hang out and meet and see? Who's trying to, like, organize and who did survive and all that stuff. So, yeah. Like, the more Order 66, as hard it is to watch and as gut-wrenching as it is every single time you see it, yeah. it's like the more, the better because... The more that story unravels, the cooler it gets. And just, again, it's still always heartbreaking. But just all the different points of view of that, just, yeah. I thought that was a really amazing moment. And just so happy for Jar Jar to get that redemption. Because he really deserved it. Best, Poor like, guy, honestly. I mean, he went through it. And the fact that he came back and had that great moment, very happy for him. And just really, really cool story. Well, and, it's really unfortunate how he's just acting Right. He was just doing his job yeah. and he got treated so shit. Yeah, it's it's pretty horrible how fans can attack people for a, a job. He's back in Star Wars. It's amazing. Don't talk shit to the actors, please. Honestly. That's just not okay. I, I'm sure no one here condones that or does that kind of behavior. So, yeah, the more of that that we could stop, the better because... We want to keep really cool stuff in Star Wars, and we want the best actors to work and not be afraid to, you know, work in Star Wars. So, yeah, yeah it's just really unfortunate. But, again, great moment. Very happy for him. And, yeah, I hope we get more with that character because he seemed really badass. So, yeah. It was another one of those fun adventure stories to this episode for Mando. They were doing some training, and you saw Grogu learning some training and did had to basically tell him, like, Grogu, it's okay. Show him what you're capable of. And he did this, like, Yoda flipping stuff, and he ended up winning his little battle with the darts and one of the younglings ended up getting snatched up by this dragon found out his name was Ragnar Ragnar Lothbrook oh my god not really Ragnar Lothbrook but his name's Ragnar which is super dope and they had, to, that. they had to go on a mission and save him and they go on this mission and Bo leads the mission and they end up rescuing him and they killed the mama but then they brought the babies home so now they they're... took the babies that was very nice now they're gonna have these baby dragons to tame and learn to ride with and hopefully become keep those yeah. things fed yeah i don't know that's a good question but they're really good at handling the big monsters so we'll <laughs> just add it to the arsenal for the mandalorians i think it's super dope but i think so by Bo leading that mission and saving the foundling and bringing him back home she got a new piece of armor and it's one of the biggest things that you could do as a mandalorian is saving the foundling and just this idea that she's being embraced and welcomed i'm still kind of i still got like my little spidey senses tingling with Bo. i don't know what her full intent is here i don't know if she is fully just trying to be embraced by a new faction of mandalorians or if she has a plan to try to wiggle her way into becoming because she did reveal the whole mythos or Mandasaur, that she saw it when they were in the waters. And, like, she's... It's very easy just to be like, oh, yeah, she's just playing along. She's happy. But, but I don't I mean, know. I don't... 
I, can, I, I see it both ways. Yeah, I don't know where that's going, but yeah, it was just my spidey senses just continue to kind of tingle with Bo because I don't know what her overall intentions are. I feel like she wants the Darksaber and to take over Mandalore and be the queen again, but she might be happy with her current situation, so we'll see where that plays out. But watching Grogu kick some butt, I thought was really cool, and obviously Din giving him that reassurance to like, hey, it's okay. Like, I wonder where that's going to take Grogu now that they see how strong and how good of a fighter he potentially could be and right. how much training he's got. Because even someone, asked, I forgot who asked Din, like, who showed him that. He's like, it wasn't me. Like, I didn't show Grogu how to do all that. So I think the idea of his training and being able to use the Force is going to start kind of coming out a little bit more. That'd and be awesome. we'll see where that goes and how they view him. And, yeah, I, I just think more training and more badass Grogu is awesome and I would have to imagine at some point soon, maybe not this season, maybe early next season or something, that he's going to get his armor and get his helmet because he has to be able to speak the creed. Like, he has to be able to say it. Oh my so, God, I love it. I can't wait to actually hear Grogu speak. I think it's going to be one of those amazing moments. Does he get to talk backwards? Like, Well, no. I... We don't know because we saw Yaddle in, a, in like the quick animated series that they dropped, uh, Tales of the Jedi, that she didn't speak backwards. That was a Yoda thing. So we don't know if Grogu's going to speak that way. I would imagine he'll speak more normal. But yeah, I, I like him trying to say this is the way like two couple episodes ago. Yeah. Absolutely adorable. And so, yeah, just watching him continue to grow and become more powerful, more comfortable. It's just it's a really cool journey to watch him become a little bit more self-sufficient and not completely reliant on Din for everything. But yeah, just watching him continue to grow and get better is just a really fun journey to watch and seeing where this story goes, because are we going to get back to Mandalore? Is this a situation where we're going to take this crew and go there? Like, are we going to get a conflict between Din and Bo? Is Din and Bo going to get together? Like, I've heard people talk about that. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot going on and the whole Mythosaur thing. And, yeah, I mean, we'll see where it goes and what how they're going to do with these dragons. And How does that work? I don't know. I'm Did not sure. Take your helmet off for I your... Would, I, I, I'm not an expert on Mandalorian love. So I'm not sure. How do you after? Let it, let it be known in the comments, guys. How do, how do Mandalorians... Have a relationship. Get down. Yeah. With their bad selves. How do they have a relationship? Of course, it's Nikki to take it there. But, I, I always mean, it's a good take question. it there. It's a good question, though. So it's interesting to see. They have I small don't know. children on yeah. this, you know, Ragnar. He's a youngling. Yeah. How do you have a youngling? Exactly. If you. It's a good question. I mean, you. I guess you could keep the helmet on. Keep it. Yeah. Keep it special. I mean. <laughs> keep it Mandal spicy. Mandalorian experts. Let us know how that goes down. How do they make babies? Share down below in the comments. On that note, you ready for the next episode? Totally. Let's go. Uh-oh. Hold on a second. Uh-oh. The fuck is that? It's a cool ship. Pirates? Pirates are back. You get the citizens to safety. I'll handle this. Engineers, thank you. To be continued. You knew that Din moment in that fight wasn't going to be the last of them. Right. Gorian Shard. I knew that Corsair looked familiar. I don't believe my eyes. The voice sounds like Grief Kaga, Guildmaster of the Navarro Antes. But all I see before me is a pampered nobleman dressed for the pomp of his wedding feast. Is that Tyrion's voice? Don't mistake my hospitality for weakness. Is that what you call gunning down my helmsman in cold blood when he let down his guard on your planet? He his shot voice first. sounds so familiar. Well, now I will shoot first. Oh, shit. You are no longer under the protection of Moff Gideon. The New Republic can't even protect the Mid-Rim from the Pirate Nation. This isn't Sabak. You can't bluff your way out of this one, Gaga. Sabak. <laughs> Sorry, Peter Dinklage. That's what I was thinking of. Oh, shit. This feels like a problem. A little bit. Um, fuck. He said he's gonna shoot first. Where was that droid getting everybody to safety? The escape pod is ready. I won't abandon my city. We have to get the people to safety. Alert! Alert! Please evacuate! This is so fast. Hmm. 
This is awful. Yeah, I mean, he had to have known that they were going to come back with a vengeance after Din basically killed all his pirate dudes and then had that space fight. Captain Taylor, we have been attacked by Pirate King Gorian Shard. I am humbly requesting the New Republic to send a patrol to clear out the raiders. I'm afraid that our planet will fall and Shard will turn this into a pirate base. Too bad. I really thought Navarro was gonna make it. And for this to Coruscant, quest permission to intercede. They haven't returned a dispatch in weeks. They're swamped. We'll never get an answer in time. That is like a really cool. What? Are he, who is he? He looks super familiar. That is really cool. Why does he look so familiar? The, cre like, the creature. Yeah, I feel like. Well, the dude was in past no, episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I he remember looks that like guy. A character from Rebels. Man, I need to do a refresher on Rebels. I'm requesting authorization and backup for a Delphi squadron in dealing with the pirate siege on Navarro. Navarro. It's a small planet on the outer rim. We have a backlog of requests from member worlds that have priority. I don't even know if we have the resources, especially for pirates. Navarro has reported accounts of stormtroopers in the streets and TIE fighters openly flying above. The citizens speak of Moff Gideon occupying the town, and now a pirate king is attempting the same thing? These events could all be connected. I'm hearing Moff Gideon never made it to trial. Captain. This oh. isn't a rebellion anymore. Did he really escape? I'm requesting authorization and backup for dealing with pirates on Navarro. Perhaps the leaders of Navarro need to understand why becoming a Republic signatory is valuable. By letting them suffer. Sounds like a rather imperial way of thinking. It often takes a new perspective before one is able to see the light. You and your sword didn't see the light. You were captured. No, I was liberated. We'll see if we can allocate some additional assets. Apologies, we can't do more. Well, that sucks. Yeah. There's something dangerous happening out there. All these events, it's not coincidence. And by the time it becomes big enough for you to act, it'll be too late. It's another very clear, obvious foreshadow for the First Order. There's been a lot of those subtle, very subtle lines kind of spit out about, like, something bad happening and growing and it's going to be too late. It's like the fourth one. I like how G68 is just like, oh yeah, you know, they should probably change their mind. Otherwise, they're just not going to get any help to let them suffer. That sucks. Yeah. And another mention of Moff Gideon. Yeah. He's clearly not. He's out free yeah, doing yeah. things. I hope we get to see him soon. He was cool as a villain. Of course. Captain Carson Tava! Clear out, blue boy. The New Republic isn't welcome here. How did you manage to find us? Mandalorians pride ourselves on our secrecy. Fortunately, someone I served with in the Rebellion is amongst your ranks. Oh. Thanks, R5. The entire covert will now have to relocate. Or we could kill him. Oh, shit. Well, slow down. Reef Karga sent this hollow message. <laughs> Everybody's so jumpy. Slow down. Navarro is under siege by pirates. He's asking for help. They're about to blow Navarro to hell. Coruscant doesn't care. Karga's your friend. You won't let him die. The New Republic has to know that the Empire is growing again. You think the Pirate King has something to do with it? Something doesn't smell right. I just came to tell you your friend is in danger, and I thought you should know. Like he's not going to do anything about it. Obviously, that's going to be the mission <laughs> for this episode. I know you'll relocate anyway, but you have my word. I will not reveal your location. Sorry to intrude. I mean, it is a little unsettling that he was able to find them so easy. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks R5. R5. Yeah. yeah. Way to go. Now, many of you don't know Grief Karga, and those that do fought against him when you rescued me from his ambush many cycles ago on the streets of Navarro. Since then, he's had a change of heart and has risked his life to save mine, as well as the foundling in my charge. I stand before you to petition an intervention to help rescue Navarro before it's too late. 
The enemy that decimated this very covert were Imperials, not Grief Karga's bounty hunters. Grief Karga is now a high magistrate and has offered me a tract of land on his independent world. Perhaps it is time for us to live in the light once again, on a planet where we are welcome, so our culture may flourish and our children can feel what it is to play in the sunlight. Grogu sounds likes the sound of that. Mm -hmm. I was there on Navarro that night. I fought against Grief Karga and his hunters. I saw my brothers and sisters fall at the hands of the Imperial butchers that hunted us. I saw many die to save the life of this one tiny foundling. He's like, sorry. The question we should be asking ourselves is why? Why should we lay our lives down yet again? Because we are Mandalorians. Oh, okay. We're, he's on the side. He's on our side. I have had my disagreements with this man, but he risked his life to save my son. And Bo-Katan Kreese did not give up on my child's life. Right. These two are asking us to take up arms in the name of a brighter future. And I, for one, will take up arms to fight by their side. I feel that feels awesome. Thank you. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. I wasn't expecting that. I was. This is the way, I dude. Would, uh, something else is up. <sighs> something else is up. This is not the way. I feel like. Navarro is an independent planet, and no longer under Remnant Imperial or New Republic protection. But it's that very independence that makes it appealing for you to settle. You lived there once, hiding in the sewers. But now, you can be heroes. Let's go. These pep talks are awesome. Well, that was that looks like the shot from the standoff and what what was that season one? Yeah. Captain, there's a star fighter off our port bow. It's the Mandalorian. Those guns are legit. Bold of you to return, Mandalorian. Thanks for your help, Mando. I decided to take you up on your offer for a tract of land. Be careful, my friend. They've got you outnumbered ten to one. Oh, shit. I like those odds. <laughs> oh, God. Hell on earth, no. Dropping <laughs> so out dope. of the sky. Hell no. That's so cool. Look at these outfits. Bobble freaks! <laughs> I love them. They're so cute. Yeah! Get them! Oh yeah, Mandalorians. Let's go. Team 2, moving toward Corsair. Dude, Mandalorians are so badass. I love them. Engine. Tell Bane and the fighters to reform for a counterattack. They're pursuing the Mandalorian. Then bring them back. All right. Shit. I love these scenes where they're flying in the caverns. This is pod racing. Oh, we got flanked. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, damn. The, with the big gun. I forgot about that big gun. Paz is there to save the day. Hell yeah. The big gun you have there. <laughs> Dang, he's just mowing them down. <laughs> Very Terminator. Oh shit. <laughs> Fuck your gun, dude. Honestly. He's above you. He's below you. <laughs> 
Dude, Din is straight surgical with that ship. Yeah, he's above you. Uh, no, he's below you now. The, the snake-looking reptile guy, that looks pretty freaking cool. I love all these, like, costumes and makeup and effects. Don't fuck with the armor, holy shit. Oh, shit. Was that a pair of pliers to the back of the head? Oh, oh shit. Bye! <laughs> Jesus! Wasn't wearing his jetpack. All clear! Advance! On me! Yeah, buddy! Take out them pirates! That's so good. That's badass, dude. Just riding the fucking ship as it's going down. We have to retreat. Okay. In a puffer pig's eye. In a puffer pig's eye? What's a puffer pig? You're going down, Pizza the Hut. That was dope shot. That, that looked true. cool. Deuces. Captain going down with his ship. Yeah. Thank you to all of you, and especially to our fine Mandalorian liberators, to whom this planet is forever indebted. Let's go. Mandalorians, I know that we have been on opposite sides in the past, but that is behind us. From this day forward, I, Magistrate Grief Garga. Hi, Magistrate, sir. Slow down. <laughs> to the fine people of Mandalore, you may no longer have a home planet, but you do now have a home. Aw, that was nice. Remove your helmet. I'm sorry? Do you respect my station? I do. Remove your helmet. Are you going to also remove yours? Our people have strayed from the way, and it is not enough for a few to walk it. We must walk it together. This is the way. We must walk the way together. Oh, Mandalorians. I understand. I was taught that the Mythosaur existed only in legends. Okay, we're gonna talk about it now. You saw it. It is a sign. But the next age is upon us. Mandalore must all come together. You have walked both worlds. You are the one who can unite us. Okay. That's awesome. Okaton Kreese is going off to bring other Mandalorians in exile to us so that we may join together once again. But she shows her face. Okatan walks both worlds. This feels weird. She can bring all tribes together. It is time to retake Mandalore. And then they're gonna have her lead, so that's I mean good and or bad. I think it's really interesting. I thought that was the end of the episode. I think it's very interesting that they're choosing her in that role. Off Gideon. Oh. That's an Imperial ship. I found a derelict Lambda shuttle. The hull was breached. The vessel shows evidence of being attacked. Any reports in the area? That's so creepy looking. There's a record of a missing craft in the region. The details are classified. <laughs> That is so creepy. It's a New Republic prison transport. Check the departure times. Oh, shit. Flight times match the ship transporting Moff Gideon. I knew it. Yep. Never made it to trial. There don't appear to be any survivors. And Moff Gideon's body is missing. This was an extraction. There appears to be something embedded in the cabin wall. Getting close on that. 
It's a fragment of Beskar alloy. Are you saying that Moff Gideon was taken by Mandalorians? What the hell? Wow. That's... That's very interesting. I mean, I think it's obvious that Gideon is out there and about. Yeah. So, I mean... This feels like it's definitely building towards bigger things. There were clear teases, potentially. There's a lot of speculation. I totally am on board with it. The idea of Grand Admiral Thrawn is Gideon working for Thrawn. The whole situation that happened a couple episodes ago definitely feels like it's Gideon related. They're definitely building things. There's been like four or five different things spoken mm -hmm. about the rising of something bad. That's obviously leading to the First Order, whether sequel haters want to admit to it or not. I don't love the sequels, but I also can acknowledge that this show is going to bridge that between the cloning stuff and the building of the First Order. It's very clear, and that's totally where we're going. I'm wondering if they are going to give us Thrawn at some point, if they're going to tease him, because he's going to be in the Ahsoka show, how that's going to play into all this. But the fact that Gideon is out and about... Very interesting. I, I want more Gideon. I think he was an amazing character, a great villain. I agree. Obviously, everyone loves the actor. He's absolutely amazing in everything that he does. So, yeah, the fact that it was mentioned a couple episodes ago that he there were rumors that he didn't make it, that he got out and escaped, I, we just got our confirmation, so there it is. Where that goes, I don't know. I think it's going to be interesting to see what this is building towards. I think a lot of it obviously has to do with the whole Pershing episode and all the stuff that went down there and the one agent that we she popped up at this episode too. So, yeah. G68. Yeah, there you go. That's all building towards that and it's all going to be connected at some point, but we'll see where it goes. It could be pretty interesting. The Mandalorian stuff, I'm pretty fascinated with at this point. It's good. The fact that the armor now is accepted that Bo saw the Mythosaur, the Mandos, they got it wrong. It's the Mandosaur. Thank the you. The fact, like, this, she totally blew her off when she mentioned it last episode. Like, like, oh, we see things and didn't completely buy into it and didn't believe her. And then she had more time to think about it. Yeah, and I think... I think she's really impressing the armor a lot. I think what Bo has been doing has been really showing her abilities and leadership skills and all this stuff. And I'm just not understanding motives with helmet off. Go get yeah. the rest of our people. I think what the idea is because Bo is part of the new school Mandalorians that she could connect to them and the old school. So the and armor armorer is perfectly okay with her removing. It feels her like helmet. it. Yeah, it, she basically gave her permission. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I. It's gonna be interesting to see where that goes because, I mean, the Mythosaur is obviously a very big element of the ruler of Mandalore and the Mandalorians, but also the Dark Saber is a very key component to that as well, and Din still holds the Dark Saber. I was expecting like a challenge to take place in that moment. Maybe not yet. But I think we might be building towards that. I don't know if Din wants to be the ruler. I don't think he wants to be the king of Mandalore. I don't think he wants to give up the Dark Saber though. I mean, he has he was willing to give it to Bo like on the ship in, at the end of season 2, so I don't know, but this is what Bo wants. She wants to be the ruler. She wants to be back in that spot. And just the armor sees something in her and clearly kind of putting her in that position to bring all the tribes together and unite everyone. So they're going to take over that planet or are they going to go to Mandalore? It feels like the plan is to go back to Mandalore. That's what the armorer said. I think they're going to use Navarro as like a home base for now mm -hmm. until they could... Like, obviously, Mandalore's going to need a lot of work, and they're going to need to put a lot of time and effort into building that back up. So maybe Navarro could kind of be just their, you know, temporary home until they get Mandalore back. I felt like that's been the big plan for this whole season was to get back to Mandalore. Like, once we were there and didn't realize that you could breathe the air and it wasn't what they all thought it was, I thought that was going to be the big plan to get back there at some point, and it feels like now... That's the plan. They've got someone who could potentially lead them, unite everyone, bring all the other Mandalorians that are kind of scattered everywhere together. And yeah, I, I'm wondering how... I think Din will be on board with this. I don't think he's going to fight it or 
resist. I mean, unless he finds something he doesn't like. Right. And I, I still, I'm still wondering how Bo is going to handle all of this. If her motives are good and positive with this group, or if she's going to try something to do something else. But it feels like she's getting what she wants. So I don't know. But I will say that definitely wasn't enough Grogu in this episode. No, never. Definitely not. But is the action sequences have been really cool so far this season. There's been a lot of really cool flying and space battles and like the dog fighting essentially through the hills and like it's all looked really really good and I'm wondering if we're going to get on track with the Mandalorian story now. Cuz it feels like we've been a little scattered in terms of what direction we're going towards with this show, specifically with this season. Uh, but I've been enjoying it very much. It's been a lot of fun. That's the main word when you watch The Mandalorian is fun. Yes, I want to It's a lot fun. of fun. Mm -hmm. It's a blast. So, yeah, all of that. And it feels like we might be getting on the road to building Mandalore back up, which I feel like it should have been, like, the main focus this whole season. And I think we're going to get there at some point. Nice. So, yeah, that was a really enjoyable episode. And, again, I feel like it was another one of those episodes that's laying a foundation for potentially where we could be going. Right. I thought it was really good. There's a lot of intrigue, obviously, with Gideon and the Mandalorians and everything else that's potentially being teased. So, fun, solid episode. I agree. So, yeah, anything else? No. All right, y'all, leave your comments. We'll catch you guys later for the next one. Have a good one. Bye. <laughs>